50,000 plus 7,000, so if I've got 50,000 and then 7,000, then 900, that's the hundreds column. Now, no tens, no units, no tenths, <coughs> nine hundredths, three thousandths. This one, I've got 9,750. I've got no units, so I need a zero. Here's the decimal point. I've got no tenths. I've got one hundredth and three thousandths. Twenty-five times fifty-three, a quick multiplication. Fifty-three, twenty-five. Five times three is fifteen. Five times five is twenty-five plus one, twenty-six. Zero. Two times three is six. Two times five is ten. Add it up. We get five. Two carry the one. Three, one. One thousand three hundred and twenty-five. 52 times by 24, 52, 24, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 5 is 20, put a 0 in, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 5 is 10, 1, 2, 4, 8. Question 5, we've just been doing this work, so we should all be really good at it. Okay, so we've got five lots of A, and if we find the other like term, another six lots of A, we've got 11 lots of A. Then we've got the Bs. They, these are a like term. Now, I need to be careful. If I'm on plus four and I take away five, I'm on minus one. So I've got minus one B, but we don't need to write one. We can just write that as 11A take away B. If you've got this, it's not wrong but we would prefer to have it written like that. Okay, 5a and another 4a is going to give me 9a. 3b, uh, take away 4b is going to be, again, minus 1b. But we don't need that one there, so 9a take away b for this one. Okay, right, substitution. We work from a couple of weeks ago. So when x equals 18, I take the 18 and I substitute it in for the x. So I get 18, take away 4, which is going to give me 14. When b is 5, I substitute it in. Okay, so I've got 22, take away 2, b. Now if they're next to each other, we multiply them. So I get 22, take away 10. So 22 take away 10 is 12. Question 9. Significant figures means, and I explained this, I've explained this twice now, once on, each, once on week 1, once on week 2, although some of you weren't in my class in week 1, but the video is still there. One significant figure, I'm looking at the most important figure here, and it's this one, it's the highest value. So I need to round it to that column. Now that column is the hundred thousands column. So I need to say, what is this number to the nearest hundred thousand? And it's much closer to one hundred thousand than it is to two hundred thousand. So my answer here is one hundred thousand. With this one, that is the most important column. It's the hundreds column. So I need to see what hundred is it closest to? Is it closest to seven hundred or eight hundred? And it's closer to eight hundred than it is to seven hundred. So my answer is 800. A number, take away 6 equals 5. So that number must be, uh, it must be 11, because 11 take away 6 is 5. If I add 6 to both sides, that you would, that's how you would work it out. You do 5 plus the 6, so that would give you x equals 11. A number divided by 5 equals 9. So you just need your times tables facts. I know that 9 times 5 is 45. So therefore, 45 divided by 5 would be 9. And 45 divided by 9 would be 5. But this one is 45 divided by 5. So x must be 45. You need to use your, your times tables and the related division facts. Okay. Um, question 13, find the missing terms. Oh, this is a bit of a tricky one. I see that it's going 
there, down, eight. And then down, eight. So it must be half of that distance in the middle. So each one of these is going to be down four. So 33 take away four would be 29. Then it goes 25. And then 25 take away four would be 21. This one I can see is just going down five. So it's going to go down five and then five and five again. So 21 down five is 16. Down five is 11. Okay, we haven't done expanding brackets in class, but now this is the third time you will have seen it in your homework. So hopefully, particularly if you're watching the video, you've got a good chance of doing this. I, if you watch the video, I bet you can do this. If you don't watch the video, I bet you can't do this. Simple as that. What I need to do is take this number outside the bracket and multiply it by this one inside the bracket. So I'm going to do that multiplication. 6 times 2 gives me 12. Then I'm going to take what's outside the bracket and multiply it by the other term inside the brackets. Each one of these is called a term. They're separated with a plus or a minus. So it's actually all of that that I'm going to multiply by. So 6 times by minus 5x, 6 times by 5 would be 30. 6 times by minus 5 would be minus 30. So it's minus 30x. Because I was like, take away 5x, but I want 6 and lots of that. Same idea here. The first two are multiplied together. So 3 times by 3 gives me 9. And then 3 times by plus 5x is going to give me 15x plus 15x. Question 17. 17.2 meters, there's 100 centimeters in one meter. So I'm going to have to times this one by 100. So if I times 17.2 by 100, what I need to do is it's actually shifting all of the digits over two spaces this way. You could think of it as shifting the decimal, and maybe some of you have been taught to shift the decimal place. Actually, what's happening is the numbers are being shifted to this way. But what you're going to get is 172. Everything's been shifted two spaces, so you're going to get a zero there as well. 1,720 centimeters. 100 centimeters equals one meter. All right, so that one was much harder than that one. Um, so that's just that's just a fact there. 100 centimeters is one meter. The fifth square number. So square numbers are like one times one is one squared, which is one. Two times two is two squared, which is four. Three times three is three squared, which is nine. So fifth square number. Let's just complete this. Four squared, which is sixteen. The fifth square number is going to be five times five. That we write as 5 squared, and that is 25. Twelfth squared number is going to be, therefore, 12 times 12. We would write that as 12 squared, and if you know your 12 times table, you know that's 144. 